Yim, and you're tuning into Cool Story Bro. This podcast is brought to you by Show Skate, a one-stop shop for all things related to skate. Link in the description below. Welcome to another episode of Cool Story Bro. Today, I have Jenny Suma, Malaysia's future flyweight champ. Oh, let's go. Oh, let's go, man. So, how are you, man? I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm alright, man. So, have you been training much? Yeah, since? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously now that all the gyms are closed, we can't yeah. really go to a gym, but I've been training still twice a day. In the mornings, I usually train with my brother, mm. who fights for one as well. Yeah. He's on the way back. And then uh, and I just train with my dad. My dad is like, he wasn't a professional fighter, but he knows enough to like hold pads, and we, t- right. we teach him how to hold pads too. So. But was he ever into like, because I, I think since I see, your, see the start of your brother's career, since Mima, right? So I think I was, I think that's when I first like noticed local MMA. So then I remember your dad is always there for every single fight. So is he like a coach coach, or he just kind of like, my dad is everything, man. My dad is like the chef. Right. He's like he used to drive us around. Like, obviously not anymore, but not so much a coach. Like, once once in a while when we're home and Keanu doesn't live with us anymore. Like mm. when I come home I stay with my mom and dad. Mm. And I'm not really that home that much anymore. And my dad right. he can hold pads now. So yeah, he's a coach. He like he likes to watch a lot of videos. He he likes MMA more than I do. Like So do you guys start because of him or like was it just like No, no, no. So are we going? To, yeah, all right, let's, let's go into it. Let's, let's get into that shit, man. Gotta so I met, I started, I started doing um, martial arts. I actually was never big into martial arts yep. as a kid growing up because I was always different, man. Being my mom is Malaysian Chinese, my dad is Nepalese, and I was born in Hawaii. Yep. So when I came back to Malaysia when I was four years old, like, I, I never felt like I belonged. And I never really had that confidence, you know? And then my uncle, who was a black belt in uh, karate, he's like, oh, you should throw, uh, you should throw the boys... And my sister as well into uh, martial arts. Right. And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to. And then when I was nine years old, my mom was like, whatever, you guys have to do it. And we started going to uh, Taekwondo. And that's how we started. And that really gave me like um, the sense of confidence and like belonging. Or, like, this is the community, you know, like all sports. Once you have that community, you get more confidence. And I learned discipline and skills and whatnot. I never really used it to like fight people, but it just gave me that confidence and to like be myself and like, in a place where I didn't feel like I belonged, you know? Right. Where, where did you grow up? So I was born in Hawaii. I uh, lived there until I was four years old. And then Nepal for a year because my grandpa, who's Nepalese, he got yeah. sick. So we went back to Nepal. And then I remember my the story was my mom was in Nepal for a year. And then she couldn't really adjust because Nepal's different, man. This is like back in, I don't know, like 95 maybe, 90, right. 96. And she wasn't used to like the food. She said it was cold. And Malaysia was so close to Nepal that she's like, all right, I'm going to take the kids. I'm going to go to KL and you can come if you want. <laughs> and so that's how we got back in KLs. And then I was in KL from four, four and a half, maybe even younger, four, four till uh, 15. So I grew up in KL. Like, right. When I went back, uh, so I left KL when I was um, 15 mm. to go to the States to study, which is a crazy story because... It's like one of those stories your mom tells you, like, oh, when you're younger, you know, you want to go to Disneyland? It's like, yeah, let's go. But she never takes you, you know? Yeah. So this was uh, like, she told me and my brother, oh, you want to go study in the States? And me and my brother's like, yeah, sure. And then like the next week, we're off on the plane. And leaving like all our friends and like everything we knew like behind. It's Damn. a crazy story. Damn, man. But that's how, and then we grew up um, in KL. I did high school, sophomore, junior, senior year, and then a year of university before I came back to KL. Oh, so you did your, your teen years was mostly spent overseas then? Yeah. yeah. And so was it, was it like hard to adjust when you come back? It was hard. Yeah, man, it was hard when I got to the States because I, ident- I identified as Malaysian, you know? Like, I, I never really connected with my Nepalese side as well, as well until recently because mm-hmm. um, through fighting and whatnot, we got this fan base and a lot of the, the Nepalese people really support my brother and I, which is really cool. Not that the Malaysian people don't, but yeah, yeah. the Nepalese people are just hard out, like supporting us. Yeah. And then that's how I connected to my Nepalese roots. But when I went to the States, I told people I was um, Malaysian. Because right. like, that's what, who I am, you know? Yeah. Like I identify as Malaysian, it's what I grew up with, and I like, speak all the languages. When I went there, I was Malaysian. And it was hard because, bro, I went to... Out of all places, Salt Lake City, Utah. I don't know if you know much about Salt Lake City, Utah, but it's like the land of the Mormon people. Right. Basically, like everybody's white, and there's like maybe like <laughs> two black people and some Mexican guys, you know, and some Polynesians. So when I when I went there, it was like a shock, man. I remember like 
it was hard to adjust because I didn't know the people. Yeah. And they were kind of like, you know, like they weren't the friendliest because I, I, who, like, who was I, you know, I was coming into like sophomore year of high yeah. school, which is like a major like formative year, you know, you, you get into your gangs, you know, you already, not gangs, but like cliques, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going, I'm going into this. <laughs> But yeah, it was hard. But then I found friends, you know, like my first friend was a Mexican guy. Basically, I, I, I was friends with all the like minority kids. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, I found some friends and it was cool. It was a great experience, but it was hard to adjust. Coming back to KL wasn't that bad because, you know, I was 19. Yeah. Almost 20. And Malaysia's home. Like I, I come back and like I feel at home. Like whenever I go travel, which I, I've been traveling a lot, I come back and like I see even though... The first thing, I don't know if you notice this, like when, whenever you come back to Malaysia and you go to like an immigration or customer service, that shit is the worst. I know. They're the absolute fucking yeah, worst. Man. Like I, I go everywhere else in the world. I'm like the biggest ambassador for Malaysia. Like every time like my friends are like, oh, you want, I want to go to KL. Yeah, let me show you around. I take them. Yeah. But when I come back myself, man, like fuck. Like that shit. I'm like, yeah, I'm not faking. No, it's, it's good. Man. Kids are, yeah. man, it's the worst, man. It's the worst. Like I don't know why. I don't mean. Well, I, I don't know what happened. Like I don't know why customer service was never taught or anything like that. Maybe it was like maybe it's training, you know? Because yeah, it's, it's you something, just get hired and yeah, go go do your job. It's something you lack though. Like if you come, like customer service is just kinda, for sure, kind of never there. For sure, man. If you, if you like travel to the Philippines or Thailand, like oh, yeah, people are so nice. Like uh, then you kind of like question it. Like is this real? Or maybe like the people in KL or Malaysia are just sometimes. Man, just, there's just some sort of like it's like we owe them something for some reason. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it is what it is, man. Yeah, it is Unfortunately, what it is. I mean, I'm not hating, not hating, but it's just yeah, yeah. the truth. I mean, I hope it changes, well, man. Like honestly, I, I wish we would like if everyone was nicer, then you know it'd be such a simple yeah, life yeah, to live, right? Sure, but man. you know, we, it's a lot, a lot of shit, crazy things happening in the world now. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I saw the podcast about um, I don't know if we could talk about it, but no, we should, we should totally talk about it, man. Like I would love to hear what you think. Man, I think it was just a. L- it wasn't well thought out. I mean, if we have that, pl- if you have that platform as she did, you know, she was obviously given the responsibility yeah. to represent Malaysia in yep. like a global platform. Yep. And when you have that sort of platform, it is your responsibility and your job to like spread the issues that matter. You know, yep. like that's that's the whole purpose of Miss Universe, Miss World, right? To like yep. promote like all of what is it like global warming to promote education and all this stuff, but. I don't think she really thought it through. I mean, obviously, who am I to judge? Like, everyone, everyone's like, everyone's not perfect, you know? I'm not going like, to cast the first stone, but when you have that, like, platform, you just got to be more responsible. Yeah, and I think she really didn't think about that. Yeah, this is, what I, this is what I think as well. Like, I don't think she's in any way maybe, like, I mean, maybe she's somewhat racist, right? Maybe. Like, I mean, I'm in no position to say that, but... I mean, she's just straight up insensitive, ignorant. Yeah, it's, I think it's insensitive, insensitiveness and uh, ignorance. But I don't think she's racist. I yeah. think she's got her views. She's saying like, oh, the way she explained was, oh, what do you mean by you chose? Like, oh, your soul. Like, yeah, it's like very deep stuff. Yeah, right. It's like yeah. super hippie. Like, I understand where she's coming from, but yeah. it just doesn't work. Yeah, this right? doesn't work. Not not when you're like a person of no, status, you man. Can't, it's, man. It's different. You can't, yeah. yeah, you got to make a stance, and she she didn't she didn't choose the right stance. Yeah, I mean. It sucks. I mean, it kind of like destroyed a career, but I, I don't know, man. Everybody has a reason doing shit like that, right? Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's deep, man. So, have you been, what have you been, what have you been like since MCO, right? So, you've been training at home with your brother. So, is that like, I mean, you've been training with him most of the time anyway, right? Even when you guys mm, are not. Nah, man. I've actually been in Bali, Bali for about, I don't know, like maybe close to five years, five years and a half. Oh, that long? When they opened up. Yeah, because the, the guys that opened it up, the Leone brothers, um, Donnie, Don Carlo Klaus, like I met them in Thailand. My, mm. So my very first camp, I made my pro debut when I was 19 years old and I went to camp in Thailand. Right. And that's where I met them. Like They were like my first close um, coaches. And when you're in a big camp, man, like you kind of... It's big, you know, there's a lot of athletes that people have to take care of, and they kind of, like, took me under their wing, so they were the coaches there, and then they decided they want to open up their own thing in Bali Mm -hmm. to, like, build, like, a culture of uh, training there and try to build, like, Indonesian champions, which they're doing a great job at, and they wanted me to come over, so that's how I ended up in Bali. Nice. So, okay, so do you, this is what I ask a lot of fighters in Malaysia, right? So do you think that if you were to have your camps here, and then if, let's say, you were to fight a guy who, let's say, his camp is in the States or anywhere else but here, do you think that's, 
there's actually advantage compared to you know people training here and people training overseas? I think uh, right now in this current time, no. I don't think we have we have the resources now. We have coaches that are good enough to we we can you know we don't have to travel as much. Yep. But it's the training partners. Right. It's, okay. It's, the thing is. We have good we have good guys in multiple weight classes. Mm. Like if you think about like the guys are really good. Mm. There's Jihan Ratwan, she's doing really good right yeah. now. Aguilan Aguilan is obviously killing it. My brother, um, Ev, mm. and there's a couple strikers as well. Um, Saiful, um, mm. Jordan Boy, they're doing good, but it's all like different weight classes, yep. you know. Yep. And then to prepare for a for a fight, have a camp, you really need to have guys in that weight class with specific strengths. That's why a camp is. Really important because when you go to a camp, there's so many different bodies that you can like pull from, you know, like, oh, if if you're in a good camp, then you're going to have that. Well, that's not true because a lot of big camps, like you don't really get personal attention, but you have to have people who are mimic your opponent. And then you have like an eight week camp where you specifically prepare for that. Mm. And that's going to be like really like helpful towards like your success. So interesting enough that you speak about like you know you're having a big camp you might not have like personal attention. So how's your relationship like with your coach? Man, uh, my coaches are like my friends, you know, because yeah. I've had this relationship with them for so long, and so they really know me and they know my strengths. And I was one of the first guys who went to Bali. So when Bali first opened up, it was me and my brother were like the first professional athletes that went there and really mm. believed. They, that they could help us, you know, and then we helped to build the team. Not that, not that they weren't great coaches. They're really good coaches, but yep. I think we were the first two athletes to help really help bring other athletes in. And, yeah, they gave me personalized attention. And what Bali does really good is now we found that the way to, like, success in, like, the higher levels is you really got to make it specific. Right. You can't have, like, a generalized, generalized training and look to go fight like a grappler. It's like, oh, right. let's just spar and spar for like 10 rounds and then do two, three times a week, let's spar 10 rounds and then go fight. No one to fight, it's just a fight. No, it's not like that, man. You gotta like prepare specifically. It's like a test, you know? You gotta study the questions. You gotta make sure you do that. The test, test um, practice test is, mm. and then go out and you take the test. So that's how it is. Like I think last year, especially in Bali, we helped um, Jingnan beat Angela Lee, who was right. un- undefeated at the time. And, yeah, we beat Angela Lee, and obviously it was a really close fight. Not that, like, we destroyed her. Angela yeah, was, like, yeah. super champion, man. Like, I'm mean, like, there was, like, two fights in my life where I was in the corner, mm-hmm. and I saw the girls or, like, the guys, and I was like, oh, shit, this chick is for real. You know, like, you can just feel that energy. Like, I don't right, know if yeah. you've ever, like, been there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got goosebumps right now because, like, I was walking with Jing Nan, who's a champ, you know. She's, like, the... When she think that strawweight champ, she's like mm. four or five time, four or five time defending champ, and I was in a corner in Japan, and we pre- prepped like so long for this fight because like the first one like didn't fall through, yeah, and then uh, people probably know Angela Lee and Ching Nan, right? They're like pretty pretty popular, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Angela, yeah, yeah, Angela, you know Angela, yeah, yeah, for I, sure. I was in the corner and I looked over, and I just saw Angela. You know, like when you're fighting, you got that game face yeah, yeah, on, yeah. like. It, it's not it's not fake man when you like I know, I know. you got it's almost like an alter ego like you yep. switch and you're like a different person yep and i saw her like from the other side like i was in the corner so i was like oh shit this is gonna be like this is gonna be like a real fight and it was man it was really cool like this is like the magnitude of the fight it was the first ever um cross uh, angela lee came up and went to try yep, to yep, challenge yep. jingnan for the title and i know jingnan so well like so i've been working with her for like such a long time she's a really good friend and i knew how hard she worked so yep. like the significance of that bout was just crazy it was that that one and another time was when i was in kl and i was fighting i kind of went off track here but it's great, man i was fighting with my brother in the same card which is absolutely crazy i, I hope i never it's hard man it's super stressful <laughs> but he was fighting christian lee yeah, yeah, Angela's yeah. brother, who's now the champion, yeah. is like he won the Grand Prix, and I couldn't be in his corner because usually I'm in his corner because I had to prepare for my fight. I had to like shut it out. Like yeah. he was fighting, and I hear like the stadium going off, raw, like you know, like every exchange, right? And it, yeah. they go off. You've been there, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I was trying to like focus on my thing, and then I walked down, and I heard as I walked down because we got to do the opening ceremony. Yeah. As I walked down, they were fighting, and um, I think Christian got counted on the sub in the third round. And I was like. 
fuck. Like, that shit is, like, the worst feeling, man. Yeah. I got, like, not, not think about it and just focus on my, like, fight coming yeah. up. And then as I'm, like, trying to amp myself up, like, all right, I see them both coming up the side of the stairs because they got to walk up to the medical room. Yep. And, like, Angela Lee and her dad is, like, carrying Christian up. Like, it was a hard fight, man. Yep. If you watch the fight, they both, like, yep. scrapped. Like, they were carrying Christian up, and my dad was carrying my brother up. I was looking to the side, like, damn, these guys, like, <laughs> really went at it, yeah. you know? Like, I, that was, like, one of the other times I really felt like, well, that was real significant. Who were you fighting that night? I was fighting um, this Japanese guy. He was former title contender. He was really tough, man. It was, like, one of those fights where my mom watches a lot of fights. Like, mm. she follows one championship, and... Um, when I got signed to fight him, I, I was pumped because I knew like if I beat him, I'm like number one contender. Yep. And my mom, I told my mom like, oh, when are you fighting next? Like, I don't know. This was, uh, I think, October, November. Mm-hmm. And I told her I'm fighting, his name was um, Shibuya. Was like, oh, oh right, right, right. And she's like, oh, he's <laughs> tough. Like, and she's like, wait. I, mean, like, I kind of got like uh, offended, you know? I was like, what do you mean? You don't think we're tough? Like, that's the thing like people don't understand. Like, people think like, oh, you, you're Brazilian, you're Japanese, you're, you're this, you're that, you're tough. Yep. But we got tough Malaysian fighters, man. Yep. We, got, we train really hard. We go out and really try to like, improve ourselves. And I think you can start to see that now. That my biggest goal with Keanu was we didn't want to really... In the beginning of our careers, we didn't really like, do social media and whatnot. Because I yep. really, really want to like, just focus, like, shut that out and just focus on being good in terms of skills and like, representing the country. Because... At the end of the day, yeah, social media is a big part of um, what we do now. You yeah. know, you got to promote yourself, you, you get sponsorships, you get brands. But I just believe that if you're not winning fights, it doesn't matter how many yep, that's true. followers you have, you know. Like, I, I, always, I always think that I want to represent Malaysia, mm. me and my brother. And when they think of like, fighters from Malaysia, they think, oh, these guys can fight, you know. And yeah. I think we really are doing that. It wasn't really easy, but that's what I want for people. Because when you look at the Philippines, yeah. what do you think of? Like, Filipino fighters. They can fight, man. They can fight. They can fight. They can fight. And I want that to be like Malaysia. I think we have like a solid group of guys yep. where, and girls where we can say that now. But obviously, it's slow. I guess it's the... Maybe it's just the culture, right? So Yeah, man. Yeah. So I can't think... Even when I train... I train with a few guys when I first started training. And they, those guys are tough guys. Mm. Like, I never knew that you know, Malaysia have this pool of talents mm. ever. So, but a lot of them are not are more into training than they are into like getting it as a getting into it as a right. Because it's yeah, but yeah, man. Like like you said, like it's it's just the culture that we live yeah. in. Like, how many Singaporean fighters do you know? No, I I only know a few. Like Only Amir Khan. Like maybe Amir yeah. Khan is the one doing great. It's just it's not a viable career path. Yeah, you yeah know? exactly. When I was nineteen, there's no one doing it. Like I was like the first Southeast yep. Asian guy. Like. It's hard, man, because like, I, I come from a middle, a middle class like, family, you know, my, my, my dad's super, my mom and dad are super like modern, they weren't really like traditional right. in like a sense, so anything we want to do, they're really like supporting us, but I, even when I, I had like three fights, mm. I'd go back to my grandpa who's Chinese, like he's okay, and I was like, oh, you're telling me, oh, stop fighting. Why are you still Why are you still fighting You know You gotta think about Like a career Even my uncles man like, like, I'm getting like Five five fights deep I'm like, making a name For myself My uncle my uncle will come up to me Like oh You know Maybe you should Do something real You just stop fighting like, And it is hard man But like That's why like, I got all creative people And like People that really Like pursue their passion Like I really Like respect that You know I really identify With those people yeah. Cause it's not it's not what you were told to do. Yep. You know, you chose the path for you. I'm sure you have like... Yeah, the, for sure. Same, it's man. not easy, yeah, man. It's not easy, man. It's not easy. And you really got... For me, I feel like... You really got to understand like if it's your passion, you got to go and pursue it, but you got to know like it's going to be hard. You're yep. probably not going to make money for a long time and maybe you, some of the people that are really close to you are going to be like, oh, you're just doing something stupid. Yep. You should go do something real. But if that's... If you really, if you really want it, man, you got to like stick with it and opportunities will come up. Yep. You know, I mean, it's you true, can make man. a like, living for yourself. Because when I started this company with my, with my partners as well, like, I think for like the first half of the year, we, we didn't get paid. Like, we were paying everyone else, but we weren't getting paid. Yeah. So it was the struggle that we had to go through. Now, we, we, we thought about it, you know, we're going to be our own boss, you know, this is going to be the good life, but when we get into it, we're like, oh shit, this is not, this is exactly not what we thought it would be. Yeah. And it's tough, man. It's really tough. And you got to like, just stick to it and just really, just hustle, man. You just got to really hustle, dude. And eventually, like, you know, with the day we moved to his office, it was like, oh, man. 
And I mean, we're not making it very far. It's not like we we jump a, a, a lot ahead, but it's still something. You know, it's still yeah. something that we like. We actually build the do the stuff from ground up. Man, it's this cool. office is super cool, man. You guys have like a walk rock climbing wall outside. Yeah. You got the showroom sign outside. Yeah. You got sneakers everywhere. I mean, this is we got sick sneakers office, everywhere, dude. This <laughs> Even in this office. room now. <laughs> so no, so initially, because you know, there's one thing that I didn't really like. MMA is is a very, I think it's a it's a very upcoming sport, right? So. Even there's a lot of Malaysians that are like now in one, uh, one championships uh, roster. Mm. So there's one time I, I tried to like propose to clients, you know, because we, we, we do like PR and shit like that as well. So then they asked us to seat, to give away shoes, like sports shoes for fighters, I mean, to, to like athletes. So my mind is like, you know, we'd be giving to these runners or these gym guys and whatnot, but we never really give any to the, I to the guys. I got a guys. Man, like... Obviously, you need people with a brand presence to yes, spread yes. your brand. I understand that, yeah. but you, if you don't support like real athletes, and exactly, what is the point of your brand? You're right. Under Armour, but you're sponsoring sponsoring guys that go to the gym and lift weights. And they're not yeah. really like I'm not. I'm not hating. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I know what you mean. But man. it is what it is, man. Like I don't understand that, but I understand it's a new brand, and you gotta like raise that awareness and whatnot. But you're not really supporting your athletes that exactly. the brand is supposed to be about. You know, yeah, man. Which is why I was I was, I was damn annoyed, man. They, they, they don't understand it. They're like. It's a sport they don't want to get into, but I'm like, they don't just fight, right? Your training includes running, yeah, hitting the gym, literally everything that everybody has to do to lose weight. You guys are doing it on a daily basis, right? Yeah, which is what I don't understand, man. So, so my, so I, I made it a point, like for myself at least, like I'll try my best to at least promote, you know, the local MMA scene because I, I fucking love MMA. The day I watched, the first time I watched it was, I think the first one championship fight was you were fighting in it. I think it was that soccer kick that you gave that guy. I think it was that. I can't, oh, remember, who, I can't yeah. remember who it was, but I know yeah, it was yeah, a soccer yeah. kick. Yeah, it was nasty, dude. They actually took away soccer kicks. Yeah, I know, like man. In my mind, I was like, okay, I didn't know that was legal. Like, because UFC doesn't allow it, right? As far as I know. No, no. So yeah. there's a few promotions that allow it now. Ryzen is like the biggest show oh, in yeah, Japan. Man. They allow stomps still. Yep. Like super pride style. Yep. Stomps and soccer kicks they allow. And one championship had the soccer kick rule, but I think they wanted to grow as a brand and like, yeah. reach a like, wider market and soccer kick is not a good look man. Yeah. even though like I have like two soccer kick knockouts like I would never <laughs> wish that upon anybody you know, I know like, man. It I'm, looks glad so scary, they, I'm glad they took that out because <laughs> even though I looked at that I was like holy shit though I wonder what the guy's head must feel like at the moment man it's like, I, I try not to think about it <laughs> is, is do you feel sport? bad though? <laughs> man After. like it's a sport yep you got a set of rules that you can work inside of and yep. whatever is fair because the, the end goal is to finish your opponent. Yep. Or win on, by decision. And the truth is, man, if he didn't, I didn't do it to him, if he had the opportunity to do it to me, he probably sure. would, right? You know? sure, and at the end of the day, like, when the fight's over, the fight's over. He's yep. fine. Everyone's fine. We got like, professional medicals there. Right to you. When I broke my hand in KL, I fought this mm. um, Brazilian champion. And then I broke my hand in the first round. I didn't feel until third. But right after the fight, they sent me straight to the ambulance. So they, oh. they're super professional nice. with that aspect of it. And everyone's safe, man. Yeah, I think the weight cut that a one championship is doing is much better than the regular weight cut that everyone else is doing, right? Yeah, so they don't they took out weight cutting because um unfortunately this um athlete died. Yeah. Cause man, weight cutting is a big issue still. Cause you like so when you're cutting weight, I used to cut weight from because I walk around like sixty five kilos. Mm. Now I'm like sixty eight. But back in when I'm training full time, like yep. Watching my diet, I walk around 65, and I gotta make 57. Mm. I haven't made 57 in a long time. But to get, to get down to 57, you gotta, in the last week, you gotta cut down your sugar, you gotta cut down your yep. salt, you can't eat carbs. And you're draining your body of all this water because you water load as well. Yep. So you manipulate your water levels, your salt and your sugars, so you're dry, you got no fat on you, and then you gotta cut water weight. So I cut usually like five kilos of water in like two days, which is crazy. Right. Because I'm, I'm small, like, in comparison to, like, the guy who's, like, 80 kilos. You got more water and more weight behind the cut. It's just not safe, man. Like, I've had a few times where, like, I'm in the bath and my heart was just pumping yeah. crazy, you know. Because like, there's a couple ways you can cut weight. Um, you can work out yep. to try to sweat it out. You can go into a sauna, which is, like, the worst thing to, to do. Or you can jump in a bath. And that's what I usually did, like, my last few weight cuts. You like fill the bath with salt, uh, Epsom salt, and mm. then you jump in. Like, it's almost boiling, and it just draws out the the, the water. You know. Yeah, but it sounds tough, dude. It's it's crazy, man. Like when I'm doing it, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm like suffering. It's like harder than fighting. But now with the new system, is you can't. You're not allowed to cut water weight, and when you get to like the um, fight week, yeah. you get 
three, three, three um, weigh-ins. Oh. And you test your hydration levels. Right. So you can't cheat the system. Like, I mean, some people still do. You just chug water and work out and chug water. So you, you go underneath the weight level. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to, hey, don't call me. Let's, let's forget about that. But anyways, you test your hydration for t- three days. Yep. So you have to maintain like at a, c- a certain weight and you can't go under. Because when you're dehydrated, it shows in your... Um, you're not doing a healthy cut. test. Then. Yeah, so w- there's no more weight cutting one championship. I think it's a good way. You got to come in close to your natural walking weight. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, and then good, you do the hydration test and you can't really manipulate that as well. So I think it's a, it's a better better solution, man. I mean, I guess I have, you don't hear much of them, cut, like people don't make, people not making fights, right? So it's ever since that happened. Yeah, I mean, there still is because sometimes you come in yeah, yeah, too heavy and you can't yeah. make, you make that weight, you still can't fight. Yeah, so what's your, what's like your toughest fight? By far, the toughest you've ever faced. Like one that actually made you like, shit, I gotta get better, man. Man, um, one that really stands out was my fourth fight. Because I only had one amateur fight. Yep. I, w- I didn't really have the opportunity like Mima days where you can fight. Mima was really, man, it was super important for the growth of yeah, I know, in man. Malaysia. Yep. You know, they had that national tournament. And then they fought like five times throughout the year. Yeah. So you get that ring ring time. You know, I didn't have that. I had one amateur fight. It was in uh, Malaysia. It was in, in the gym. And there was like 30 people. And I fought. I was 18 at the time. It was like right before I went back to Hawaii. I came back yeah. to KL for the summer. And I, I saw there was a gym. And they had uh, these local. It was called that. Uh, I forgot. MFC or something like that. So it was like a, you have a tournament in Malaysia. Yep. And then you fight like two fights maybe. And you become the champion. And I saw this. Like, oh. I messaged the gym. I said, hey, excuse me, let me fight your champion. Because <laughs> I was 18, man. I thought I was yeah. the shit. He's like, okay, who do you want to fight? And I, they gave me like a, like a list of people. Yep. And I picked the biggest guy. <laughs> he, was like, he was like 85 kilos, I think. And I, I was maybe like 60, 64 kilos. And we get to the gym. It was like, there's supposed to be like this Kung Fu seminar yep. going on right after. So there's like maybe like 20 people in the gym. I remember going in, having this fight and... I was so scared. I thought I was, the, I was the man, you know, and when I got into like, this fight, like my first real like cage fight, it was like a low cage. I was so scared. Like I ended up winning that fight, but that was like my first experience. I was like, oh man, this is cool. Let me do it again. But after that, I went to Hawaii and then I, that's the only fight I've ever had. And then when I went back to Hawaii, I mean, I'm, I'm just dropping like yeah. information. When I went back to Hawaii, my brother, um, he came back to Malaysia because my cousin at the time, he was really sick and he was, he was about to pass away and yeah. he decided to like stay with him. And I went to university. And the whole time I was in university, I was working full time, you know, like I, I had a scholarship the first semester yep. from high school, from like doing um, this business program for higher, for like college purposes. And the first semester was paid for. I was like, cool, I'm in Hawaii. I couldn't train because I had to work full time to like pay for this the school. Yep. And then the second semester came and I said my scholarship was over. Like I, I had only had enough money for the scholarship for the first semester. Yep. And I was like, oh, what do I do? Like, oh, you can go to the front office and they'll talk to you. And this was in Hawaii. I was on my own, like I was working full time, like I don't know how many hours a week. And they said, oh, you got to find a way to pay for the next semester or you, you can't stay here. Yeah. Like, first, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm, I'm over here trying to like get an education and yeah. you're telling me like, you can't pay for it. You can't help me. You got to figure it out yourself. So I go to the bank in Hawaii and they're like, oh, hey, we can give you a loan to pay for this next semester. So I got this loan, which is not a small chunk of money. It's yeah. like, wait, what the, what am I doing? You know, like I'm out here, like, I'm in school because, not because of me, because mm. you know, I'm trying to please my parents. Not, first of all, I want to f- say like education is super important. Yep, I'm not sure. like, I'm not telling you to like, don't go to school. Yep. But the path that I chose was the whole time I was in university, my passion was I want to compete. Like, I want to like, go out and, like, try to, like, compete and, like, you know, make a living for myself. If it doesn't work, all right, fine. You know, my, my plan B, I'll go back to school. Yep. So the second semester, I got this big loan, and the whole time I was there, I'm like, man, I, so if I finish this semester, what about the next semester? Yeah. And the next semester, the next semester, am I just going to keep getting out loans and loans and loans by rent? Nah, like, uh, let me just go back. Because my brother at the time, like, signed this. He didn't sign this. He got offered a contract with a small show in mm. Thailand. And then that was like, man, oh, what? My brother's doing it? Let me just, let so, me go back and do it too. So I saved up a bunch of money. Um, 
I think I told my mom and dad, but at the time I was like doing my own thing, you know, like yeah. I was like pretty independent. They're like, oh no, you shouldn't do that. But I bought my ticket and I came back and I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna train full time, you know. So I trained full time from there. From I came back maybe like May of 2012, and I trained like me and my brother trained three times a day, Monday to Sunday. Like there's no rest day because like, we want to do this like hard, you know. Yeah. And for and we like that's I learned a lot from that. Like you you can't do that, you know, because you your body burns out. You gotta like train smart or else you're just gonna get yeah. hurt. But going into that, like I had one amateur fight and I was thinking, oh, let me get another fight to work my way into like one championship. Because yep. at the time, like and now it's like the biggest promotion in Asia, right? Yep. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going That's off here. Good. So, uh, yeah, we trained four times, three, three times a day, Monday, Sunday, and then we finally got this fight in JB. There's this show called Ultimate Beatdown. Yes, yeah, yes. Ultimate Beatdown is like a, a good show, man. A lot of guys it's that come around for a long time. Long time. Melvin yeah. Yo does a good good job with that show. Like Jihin, Jihin Ratsuan came out mm. from that show. There's a couple guys following that show as well. It's a good like it's a good platform. Yeah. So we we want to fight there. It's like oh let, let, let's just like get a couple fights there. But we at that time Keanu already had a name in Asia, like a Southeast Asia at least. You know, like yeah. people like heard of him. Like oh he's this tough kid. He's coming up, and we had this fight scheduled. Both of our opponents pulled out. They didn't want to fight us. Why? I have no idea. Like I, I think maybe like somehow like gyms like talk low. Oh, maybe don't fight these oh, guys. Like yeah, you know, why not? So our fight pulled away and like, but then happened and then, damn! Like we trained so hard for so long and then our fight didn't. So you didn't even get replacement. No one, nothing. No replacement. These guys that like, ended up fighting someone else just they just didn't want to fight us. Wait, so they fought, but they fought someone else. They fought someone else. The hell, dude? Yeah, it's whack, man. It's whack. It's whack, dude. That's it's really whack. Bad, yeah. But anyways, like we just keep training, and then I was training with like this professional fight team at the time. We get invited to train with like the pro guys, you know. And then I get a message from mom. You know Samir? Samir from from Monarchy. The flexible something, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Flexible. He, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get a message from him. He's like, "Hey, you want to fight in three weeks for one championship?" I said, "Oh, let's go." <laughs> um, which I gotta go into like. I signed this contract, which, which was really bad, you know, because I was young, I was 19, yeah. and I didn't have a manager at the time. I signed this, like, really bad contract, but I had to, like, fight up my way out of it, and now I'm like, into a better contract. Don't sign a contract that you don't know anything about. Is what I think I'm this is what happens when you get excited, man, right? I mean, I was young, and it was an opportunity yeah. to jump yeah, in, like, exactly, a big show, man. you know? Like, I learned a lot from it. That's why like, when, whenever, like, I got the younger guys coming up, I was like, man... Oh, my, my contract is about to expire. Um, I'm just going to sign a new one. It's like, man, no, you got to negotiate. You know, you got, you got a following now. You can't just take what... If you, if you don't like it, man, try to fight it. You know, yeah. people don't understand that you have that power to do it, which is, which is hard because there's no management in Asia, you know? Yeah. Like, you, you go through your gym or you negotiate yourself. So even you at the moment, you don't have a manager now? My dad, like, does some of the work for me, but sometimes I got to, like... Because I know, I know the guys, you know, I've been with the organization since I was 19, so yeah. I, know, I know people now. People don't understand, man, that you got to, like, fight back. Because now you're in the... you got a direct link to the organization, and yeah. they're giving you this. And if you say no, then, okay, you don't get a fight. Yep. Like, it's, it's not the right way to do it, you know? Like, unfortunately, you got to learn from this, and I, that's why I try, I try to tell all the young guys coming up, like... I mean, I'm young, but, like, the younger guys coming up... You got to try to, like, negotiate, you know, like, work. I mean, because it's kind of scary. I guess they, they worry that if they, if they don't please these guys, they yeah. might not get, get a fight anywhere else, Exactly. Right? I mean, I'm, there are opportunities outside, but it's very limited. Yeah. It's very limited. So, I, I understand it's a risk, but you got to do it, man. If they say no, then they try again. True. Fair try enough. Try again. But I was going to, what was I going to? Fighting? I signed a contract yeah. that... um wasn't a great contract yep. and I took this fight on three weeks notice against a Singaporean guy in Singapore in the Singapore Indoor Stadium so my first fight 30 people and then I jumped straight into the Singapore Indoor Stadium which was like 10,000 people and I was fighting a Singaporean guy who had like he was like th training the army at the time yeah. like he's like a little bit older he's like 34 I think so here I'm, here I'm 19 years old only ever had one fight in my life <laughs> I got this short opportunity to step up yeah and it was on the big show, man. It was in one championship. It was called Rise of Kings. And there's two title fights on that card. 
Shinya Yoki, I don't know if you know Melvin Manhoff. Mm. Melvin Manhoff is like this crazy Dutch kickboxer, like knockout puncher. I used to watch yeah, highlights. Yeah, he's really big, dude. Like he's back huge. Then, yeah, he's yeah huge. back then, like I used to watch, me and Keanu used to watch highlights of him. And I, he's I'm, the Uberim's era, right? I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's, he's this guy like knocking everybody out and I'm cutting weight with him in the room, bro. This guy is crazy. You know, like, I was cutting weight with him and my opponent was like in the same room because yeah. there's only like one sauna room. And here's Melvin Manhoff, big, jacked, walking around. Ball, not ball, but naked. <laughs> just swinging his dick, bro, walking around. I was like, man, what, the, what is going on? Like, and he was cutting like nine kilos in a, two days. Oh, shit. It's, it's crazy. But anyway, I saw some things I never want to see again. <laughs> and we cut this weight, and then I fight. And I go out there, and I knew I had to win. Like, I, that's the only thing I knew I had to do. I went out, fought. Uh, I wasn't booed. Yeah. Because like I don't know I was young, like people don't really it was a like Singaporean and Malaysian rivalry, yeah, yeah. which is pretty popular. And I go out there and I knock this guy out in thirty seconds. Oh shit. I was like that was like my door, you know, I opened the door for myself. I had yeah. this opportunity and now like after that they started like promoting me a little bit more. But Damn. that was a crazy, crazy experience going from thirty people straight away into like I wish I had like the amateur experience who had more ring time. So yeah. I, had to, I had to learn. But the question you were asking me, I'm sorry, I went off on a crazy time. No, it's okay, man. It's all good. The question you were asking me, like, what fight I, I was like, oh, I need to get better from, it was my fourth fight. So I, I fought a bunch of, like, Malaysian guys. Uh, and then my fourth fight it was in the Philippines. It was in the Mall of Asia Arena, which right. is, like, the biggest arena in Asia, I think. Mm. It's, like, the arena where they throw the NBA Boxing games. matches and shit, right? Yeah, they yeah. got, like, the jumbotrons up top. Like, yeah. man, I thought it was, like, oh, it was my first time going to, like, a press conference as well. So they flew me out to Manila. I had to, like, put on, like, the... The, the tie and like do a press conference. I thought I was like, oh, let's go. <laughs> and I was finding this Filipino guy who, he was tough, man. He had like, all his fights where we, my, my, we won by knockout. Um, but I, I thought I was better than him. I, I thought I was more well-rounded. Well -rounded. But the day, the day of the fight, I didn't have a good fight, you know. This is, my, this is the first time like the Ministry of Sports was behind me, you know. Like, yep. So it was like a big fight for me. Fighting in uh, Manila, representing KL, representing the, the country, and I didn't have a good performance right. because I don't know. Maybe I wasn't like confident in my ability, confident in my abilities. I didn't have a good camp or not. But he, had, he fought better that night. I couldn't get off what I needed to get off, and I lost by points. And that was when I was like, damn, I really gotta get better before. Because at that time they were like, oh, maybe, they were talking about me like fighting for the title soon. And for me, like I, I'm really realistic with my skills. Like yeah. I know I got skills. Like now you talk about now. I believe like I'm up there. Yep. Like I, I was number one contender for one. They offered me a title shot, but I was hurt. I didn't take it. At that time when I was like young, I mean, I'm still young, but I was like 22, I think. Yep. I realized like, man, I got to get better. Like I got to work on a lot of aspects of my game, like wrestling and grappling more before I can like try to fight. Like, cause I knew like the company was growing they were signing new better fighters. That was one fight that I was really like, ah. I got a lot of, a lot of long it, way to go. Yeah, with the same division as the Mighty Mouse, right? Yeah, I was supposed to be in a tournament with Mighty Mouse. Yeah. There's a video out, yeah, like I was, Prix, I was yeah. in the Grand Prix. And then uh, I had this, um, so I'm fought in like uh, <clears throat> two and a half years, man. Damn. Yeah, because of this um, this medical issue that I got going on right now. Have you been cleared yet? So I've been, so oh, I'll just tell people, like, so I, I was born with a cyst in my brain. Yep. And I didn't know about the cyst until I was 19. So my first fight with one, I had to do an MRI. Mm -hmm. And here I was in Thailand alone, didn't know anybody. I was, went to the hospital by myself and like, oh, you got to go talk to the, this uh, neurologist. Yep. I was like, oh, man, what's wrong? So I go in and he's like, oh, pulls up this x-ray. Oh, we, we you know there's a cyst in your brain. And my first thought was like, oh, shit, I haven't even fought yet. Yeah. And here it's over. I can't fight. Yep. And I was like, oh can I still fight? And he goes, yeah, it's fine. Oh. <laughs> You're fine. I, you know, it's normal. It's not, he didn't say it's normal, but it doesn't affect it's, you. Yeah, it's not, it's not, not the worst thing ever. It's not, it's not really harming. So yeah. I was like, all right, cool. And I forgot about it. So I do all these fights and I fought 12 fights for one championship. I was the number one contender after beating the Japanese guy. They offered me a title shot. I didn't take it because I was hurt. Yep. And I hurt my knee. Right. I hurt my knee after that and I was preparing to come back to fight in KL against the former champion, Kairat. He was like 25-1 and one at the time. It was, I thought it was a great matchup for me because he's a short wrestler and I'm yeah. like longer. I got, used my range really well. 
and my hurt knee, I didn't rehab it well because I wanted to come back soon, you know. And then in, in sparring, I, I got kicked in the knee and my knee just gave out. Yep. So I was out for a while. Then I took like four months off just to rehab. And yeah, so I work all this way back, rehab, come back to KL. And I was supposed to fight Danny King out who went, went to the finals with um, DJ. Mm. He was good, man, Danny King yeah. out. Like, I, I predicted that. There was going to be the King out and DJ. It wasn't in the an finals. easy fight at all. It wasn't, man. It wasn't. It wasn't. People, I tell people, one championship has a lot of guys. No, I was honestly shocked in the way Mighty Mouse was demolishing the entire roster in UFC. Yeah. And all of a sudden he came here and I thought he would have a easier yeah. fight. But man, you, it's just as hard, man. Because the guys that he fought are all champions as well. His yeah. first round in the tournament for Yuya Wakamatsu, who just knocked out Gehei, who was the former champion. Yeah. These guys are the tough, man. Yeah, man. And then in the second fight, he fought. I'm going through a tournament. He's fought on Tatsu Mitsuwada, another Japanese guy. Mm. He beat a Kaikara, who's in, a, in, he used to fight in Ryzen, yep. the biggest show in Japan. He beat Kaikara, who's now in the UFC, by top five. Yep. He beat Kaikara. So these guys are legit, man. And obviously, DJ's having a hard time. He hasn't really finished anyone yet. Yeah. And now he's got this matchup lined up next against Adriano, the champion. Ooh. It's going to be a sick fight. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, so basically, when are you, let's say, is one championship planning to do anything like what the UFC is doing? Are they going to like just do close shows or stuff like that? Yeah. They had the first close show ever, like before the UFC. Mm. It was in February because they... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they had a closed yeah, 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 yeah. close door event. Yep, and yep, then, yep. unfortunately, like Singapore kind of like became like the epidemic center yeah. of um, Asia. Like they, they've just been like hit hard with like all the... Migrant workers, dorms, yeah. and whatnot. The, the, the cases haven't gone down at all, so yep. it's impossible to try to like, fly people into Singapore at the moment. And Asia in general, like they haven't opened up any borders. Yeah. You know, like the U.S., they they're allowing flights to go in, so it's easier for them to like throw on fights. Yeah. They well, they want to, man. But I think the number one concern for them is just like to make sure like the athletes and the staff is yeah. healthy. No one's really getting, no one's dying from this. You know, yeah. that's that's a bigger issue. Yeah, it's such a weird time they've been living in, dude. Like honestly. It sucks, it sucks, but I guess it's going to be worse, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was, so, like, I remember, let's talk about competitive pressure, right? So, I remember when I first competed in my first jiu-jitsu tournament. When was this? It was the UK. So, my first, oh. yeah, my first ever jiu-jitsu tournament was in the UK. So, like, I, I started jiu-jitsu because I wanted to lose weight. Because uh. I, I can't do, the, like, gym and shit. It's just too boring for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel so, I went, I went to train jiu-jitsu. That was like, my goal was just to lose weight. So, I think about, after, like, two classes, and I was just like... I was so mind blown the way that like, people are ragdolling me, and I'm pretty big. I was I was big. I was fat. You know, like this guy was like much smaller than me. How big? Like, I was like maybe ninety kilos. I was just fat. Just what do you know? About like 75, 78. Oh, so yeah. a lot bigger. Yeah. So so it's like I was just fat, and those wrestling guys were like smaller than me, and they're ragdolling me. I was like so pissed off. I was, like, dude, there's no fucking way, man. And so I I just start training harder. I train every fucking day, dude. So I started training in this gym called Crazy Monkey. What year was this? 2013, I think. Whoa, you've yeah. been around for a while. Yeah. Okay. So I, I trained a like crazy monkey. So, because I'm from Sabah. So, do you know those guys, Adrian, Adrian Tam? Yeah, yeah, man, I love yeah. those guys. So, those guys are like um, the guys that kind of got me started. So, I trained here. So, when I go back to Sabah, I train with them. And training with them is like, because we don't have a lot of, we don't have proper Jiu Jitsu gyms. Yeah. So, we, what we did was in the, like a, like a celebrity fitness, for example. So we, we just take out mats. Oh, you... We lay it out on the floor and we just start training in the, the middle of the gym. That's so cool. Yeah, That's what we did. Like, it was, we had to take turns to roll because it was small. It was like a nine square mat. So that's when I started like going really crazy with Jiu-Jitsu. So when I went to UK, I was like, oh shit, I, I really want to compete. But I haven't found a gym yet. When I got there, I haven't found a gym yet. So I just went to, went to the, like my first ever Jiu-Jitsu tournament on my own and I got destroyed. Dude. What, what, what the school are you going to? I uh, went to Gracie Baha in Bristol. Okay. Yeah, so, so then when I went to the first tournament, I was, like, I was so like, before going in, I was like, you know, I've been hanging with all these tough guys and I, I mean, I don't get, at least I can survive. Yeah. So in my mind, I was like, okay, maybe that kind of pressure will like help, you know, but when I got in there, I was just like, all of a sudden I was tired. Yeah, I, I know. Like, it, yeah. What the hell, dude? I was like, shit, I haven't even did anything. All I did was warm ups and now I'm just like gassed. Yeah. And I haven't even started the fight yet. I was like, oh shit, dude, this is crazy, man. After that, I was just like, oh. But it, it's, it's a fucking crazy experience though. Like, I really yeah, love yeah. the idea of like... Competing. Of Testing not knowing yeah, what this guy is going to do yeah. to me and what I can do to him. It's crazy, man. But I, mean, I lost so many fights there, dude. My first year was just like, trying to like... How many tournaments do you go to? A lot. Really? That's cool, yeah. man. I travel a lot for tournaments because it's so often there. Like, it was every weekend there's something on. Where are you training now? Crazy, crazy... Crazy monkey. Crazy monkey. Now I'm just like, casually training. It's, it's like, 
a bra- same as the gym I used to train at, uh-huh. just that it's a different branch. It's a much smaller branch. Okay. Yeah. So I just it's more like more like we don't compete anymore. So we just a couple of like older guys just learning, just like learning yeah, just rolling. How often yeah. do you train when like if here about like twice a week. Okay. Yeah, about two or three times a week. If you open my account, then yeah, it's like three times a week. So yeah, you jujitsu guy. I love jujitsu, man. Okay, cool, I man. I really love it, dude. But I mean, what's your favorite submission? I think the kimura. Dude. The kimura? Yeah, the kimura. Where do you get it from usually? I get it from either close guard or usually side mount. Side mount or close guard. From top? Uh, yeah, from top. Okay. No, actually, no. If side mount is from, I'm being the bottom. It's yeah, more yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. It's more yeah, like yeah, a bait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to bait the way that. Yeah, man. I mean. For me, I think I kind of stuck with Kimura because I first started, there was the only submission that I catch most of the time. Uh-huh. Like I used to go for chokes, a lot for like those collar chokes. But I think after three, four years of training, my fingers are just like not, they're not, Checked. they're like really, really just stiff. Yeah. So then I just stopped doing that for a while and just like, just do something else first. Man, man, Jesus has changed so much dude, over the past few uh, years. Yeah, man. The Danaher system, all these. Yeah, man. Like I was, I just didn't get the leg lock. I, I didn't like leg, lock, leg locks because my leg is fucked. So I don't want to like, Risk you know, your leg. Yeah, risk my leg, and yeah, then I have to I like, you. you know, it's, it's just crazy, man. Man, man, it's crazy though. Like, I remember training here, so that, like, I feel like it was a big difference because here we have classes like maybe twice a week, right? But in in like UK, you have classes every, every fucking day. day. Yeah. Yeah, so I start training every fucking day, dude. So I came back after a year. So people who used to like fuck me up here, all of a sudden I can like hang hang with them, and I was like, whoa, shit! I actually didn't realize like the progress because when I came back, I was like, oh, I haven't seen you guys in a long time. Let's roll. All of a sudden, like, I'm getting top position. I was like. Well, are they like testing me? So they want them let's play Shark Tank. So we just like, all just start rolling and just see whether you, you know, yeah, yeah whether that's I'm, a I'm, real test, man. Yeah, when I'm fatigued and I still roll and I oh shit, I actually can hang with these guys. I was like, man, I did not like. It's kind of nice to know that the journey that you take through martial arts like, that you will see an evolution. Yeah. Like you know that the first day you started, you're like really just, just like shit smashed. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you slowly slowly get to a point where you can actually hang with these guys. It's crazy, dude. It's yeah. such a fucking good feeling, man. It I is, man. It, dude. it is. That's really like pushing yourself. And pushing back, so pushing back in those situations where you don't feel good, like you yeah. just feel like you're getting suffocated. But then yeah. you keep pushing through. Like sometimes, like in training, man, you feel like you're not getting better. Yep. And all of a sudden, yep. click, you should jump to the next level. That's why it's like so important to stay consistent. And that's cool, man. Maybe we should train together. Sometime. Yeah, man, definitely. I, I've been wanting to train with, you know, you Aki learn. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, man. Also, Aki learn left Monaki. Yeah. Where is he gonna go though? I think right now he is. Planning to teach in a couple other gyms, I think. I forgot. I think it's Jeet, Jeet Academy KL mm. and um, another one called Blueprint, Blueprint Martial Arts. So it's more like moving about and just... Moving about. I mean, I talked to Aguilan after his uh, last fight in KL. Mm. He is at a point where he knows he's got to train with better guys. Like in KL, we have coaches. But I'm telling you, we just don't have the training Trade partners, partners yet. Yeah. And Aguilan's at the level where he's going to be fighting like... Top guys. He's been fighting tough guys, you yeah. know. And... That's why he made them move out to the States to train with Ong La and uh, Martin, like the champs for one mm-hmm. championship. They got like Kamaru Usman out there, Henry Hoof, who's like Damn. crazy, crazy good coach. He's out there. He was out there, but unfortunately, like the COVID thing happened and he had to yeah. come back. But I think he's going to go back. That'd be a good move for him, I think. I mean, I, I mean, it's been really long since he's training there anyway. And I'm sure like there's, there's going to be mm-hmm. a point where you, don't, you know this guy inside out and yeah. training with him is just not going to like help for you sure. improve, right? For so, sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And yeah, man, I think he's at the point where he should go out and like, try new things. Like, yeah. Jim's always going to be there. We never know. know, man. Might get better. For sure. He's yeah. only going to get better. Yeah. I can, he's I can a young man. dude. He's a young dude, man. He works hard, man. I guess he's one of the hardest workers that I've ever seen and I think that's going to help him. Yeah. Whatever he does. For sure, man. So you see, do you watch the fights? UFC? Which ones? Well, the, the biggest one was Tony and Gigi. It was the biggest fight. Yeah. yeah that was a good fight, though. That was a great fight, man. I thought, I thought it was going to be more closer. No, actually, honestly, I didn't know why Ferguson didn't wrestle. Like, I just didn't know why he didn't want to wrestle. Man. Like, since he's been training for Khabib, right? Mm. And Gagey's not. Uh, Gagey's a wrestler. He's a wrestler, but he's not, like, into wrestling, right? No. He's a scrapper. So, like, I don't know why, man. The whole time, he just want to stand and bang. And I was like, yeah. Now you never know, man. Man, the thing is, like, all his fights have been doing so good at, from the outside. Like, picking yeah. people apart and, like, putting the pace on them. Yeah. I thought he... I think he thought that he... Gagey was going to wear down. Yeah. He was going to start getting tired in the third, fourth, fifth round. But Gagey just was... Looks, yep. He looked so good, man. He looked so was, good, His man. defense was so sharp. His counters were there all night. Yep. And he just never got into the range where he could like, shoot. But his chin is down. crazy, though. His best chin in the game, yeah, man. Best chin, chin in the is game. Like mad, dude. Man, I'm, a good chin is like... 
important if you want to be fight at that like, high level. Yeah. You know who's got a crazy chin? Ong La. Ong La. Ong La Ong Sok. Man, if you watch him fight, man, that guy takes hits. It's like he gets a big hit. His head <laughs> just comes back, man. He's like he's not even blinking. And he keeps going forward. Like that guy. That guy's got a great chin. But it's crazy though. I've I've tried boxing, but I've never. I could never like keep myself in front of this guy and like you know what. I know a punch is coming, but I'm just gonna stand there and take it and not blink. I just keep flinching, dude. It's like, oh shit, it's ah, hard. It's hard, man. man. Sparring, is, sparring is a different thing. You gotta, like, not spar with emotion. That's the biggest thing. Like, when, it's hard to do, man, because it's, it's natural instinct. Someone slaps you in the face, yeah, man. red. Yep. I'm trying to, like, kill you. Yep. But when you're sparring, you gotta think of it like a sport and, like, try to maneuver around that. It's a whole, like, it's a whole process. You gotta, like, really have that experience sparring to, to like, get those reflexes. So, is your. When it comes to fighting, right, in the cage itself, is it more, are you thinking as you go or are you just more like autopilot? Like I'm already like drilled to the point where everything is autopilot. In a fight, at, after eight weeks of camp, in the fight, usually it's like reaction based, you know? Yep. Like obviously if you're outside, you got things that you've been working on to like find openings, you know, you think he's going to shoot. Mm. You got to make him shoot and sprawl and then like defend and you want to take him down, you got to get the hands go up and yep. then take him down. Like it's, it's a whole thing in sport. But it's more reactions in the time. You can't, you got to flow, you know? Yep. That's like how you got to be successful, I found. Yeah, because most of the time, like I see, like I think fighters, when they're in the cage itself, they don't really have time to think anymore, yeah, right? Exactly. It's really like you have that 0 0.1 second to react to whatever the guy's doing. Yeah, it's just training. Yeah, man. But so, so all these movements that you drill, is usually what you drill during training. So that yeah. it's just getting to muscle memory so that when you can come time to shine, you just put you it out. You got to perform. God damn. That's what they call it, man. But I don't know, man. I, wonder, I really wonder what it's like to be like, in the center of a cage, you know, fighting someone. Because even for Jiu Jitsu, like the biggest tournament I went to was uh, was the Euros in Portugal. So, Lisbon. Yeah, Lisbon. So then when I was there, it was nerve wracking. There was like thousands of people yeah, watching. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, what? That's a big tournament. Yeah, yeah, I was like, what the fuck, dude? I was like, shit, man. And I was just like this fresh ass white belt. Because I, I was training. Um, so the, my coach was, under, uh, was training under Roger Gracie. Mm. So then he was like there to coach us. Bro, it was so stressful, man. It was like, this one random ass motherfucker just starts shouting at everyone. He's yeah, just yeah, yeah. screaming, screaming, screaming. And I can't understand him that much because it was so loud. Everyone's just shouting. When I let, when I, because I won my first fight, it was, it was like, it wasn't even that good. Like, like I just pretty much hold the guy down. Like, it was more stalling. Like. I admit, I stalled. <laughs> so, so then I got shit for that. I got a lot of shit for everything, like, bro. Like, it was, <laughs> it was so stressful, man. I was like, in my mind, I thought my coach was coaching me. I didn't know that Roger oh, was, was yeah. I didn't know Roger was the one that's gonna coach. Because it was just like it was I wasn't prepared for that. Because he wasn't there throughout the throughout my training anyway. Roger Gracie was in your corner coaching you. Yeah, he was coaching Ooh. all he was coaching all everyone from that school. Cause he was that's basically cool. the, the head of that school anyway. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so then I was just like fucking stressed out, man. I was like, shit, dude. <laughs> I was like, I, I he because my plan was like, okay, single leg, you know, then set up for a, set up for like a half guard and then just go for a kimono or something like that. Just, it was yeah, my yeah. game plan all the while. He's just shouting like you know, pull, pull guard, guard, pull guard, pull guard. And I was like, but I don't, I don't really want to pull guard though. And it's yeah. so tiring pulling guard though. And I pulled guard, I was like, I was like, done, man. I was after, the, after, my, after the guard. first fight, the second fight, I was just like, gassed. Yes. I was gassed already. And I was like, shit, dude. Man, and tournaments, it, tournaments are a whole different animal, man. Because you got to go through like the adrenaline dump and whatnot. Because when you, the first time you got competed, I, I learned this as well. Yep. Just because you didn't control the adrenaline. Yep. Like you, you can't listen to like, pump up music like die motherfucker yep. die at, at like 9am in the morning when you got like a competition at yep. night because your adrenaline is going to sh just shoot down you got to be calm man and then really use that adrenaline for the match you know or, unless you're going to gas yourself yep. but tournaments is hard because you got to go through that and then you, you got to plan you got to really yeah, yeah exactly right? you got to plan the one thing I realized is when it comes to competing right so let's say I the, show, the, the entire tournament starts at 9 but I'm fighting at like noon so what I realized here, the 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 well, the, at least the Jiu Jitsu competition is Copa. Copa. So the way the weight, the weighing system works, it's kind of weird though. Like, you start the entire thing at nine, yeah. so fighters have to be there at nine to to weigh in weigh first. In, yeah, it doesn't matter what time. Yeah, it doesn't matter what. Time. And and so the crazy thing is like, okay, I weigh in at nine, so I'm I'm I made the weight, but then when I'm gonna fight at like five p.m. and I'm gonna weigh in again. Yeah, I don't understand. It's, it's kind of weird though because I'm definitely gonna put back all the water weight yeah. and shit. But I'm gonna have to eat, right? So right. you can't make me wait eight hours until like to rehydrate and shit. It's kind of crazy, dude. Yeah. So I feel like that is kind of that's the one of the reason why I don't want to compete because I, f I feel it feels so unhealthy, dude. Like yeah. I feel like I will probably kill myself, like trying to like cut weight mm -hmm. and shit. 
But I'm, I'm glad to see more tournaments here, for sure. Man, how crazy, like, how big has it gone? Like, the yeah, Copa on the first year was so, so small. Now yeah. they got, like, the whole space. Now they got, like, every quarter, every quarter of the year, they'll do it once. Yeah. Something like that. It's crazy, man. Like, because... Well, I don't remember. I never got got to compete here because when I left to the UK, it was like it wasn't big here then. It was just yeah. the first season of Mima, mm. so it wasn't wasn't that big of a deal. So when I went, I came back, then I started seeing all these tournaments. It's it's nice, dude. But I'm just really scared because people slam people slam a lot with jujitsu, right? Especially when you're a white belt. Because I'm still a white belt. It's been like you sandbagging. You sandbagging. No. You've been training for seven years. You're a sandbagging. No, that's, that's because I when I because when I left UK, I was supposed to get my blue belt, but I didn't go training today, and it was my last week at, at UK. So now I just called my coach and like, you know what? I said it's okay, man. Like, it probably doesn't matter anyway, like, So because I'm just like train. After that point, I'm like, I'm kind of done with competing. I just want to like train, train for fun, you know. So when I came back, so I went back to the gym that I used to train in. So the coach like, I don't know why he like I've trained here for quite a while, but he just never graded me. So you know what? I'm like, okay, you know what? It's okay. I don't bother. I don't bother. So like, then yeah. I went to train my friend. It was the same. So so in the end, I was like, you know, what? I figured. Well, it's just a belt anyway. Like, at the end of the day, I'm still going to be... You know, if I don't train for 10 years, if I'm a black belt, I'll still be shit, right? So, it's just a belt. So, I'm just training. I mean, it's fun, you know, like, like to see people's face when, like, you're rolling blue belts and they're like, what the fuck? Dude? You're just a sandbag. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> I mean, because, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not training anymore. So, I mean, I'm not competing anymore. So, like, I'm just doing it for fun. Yeah. Like, I love, I just love the idea of learning. You know, like, now I'm just getting into reverse Kimura. Reverse Kimura groups. Okay. Yeah, that shit is... Pretty interesting, man. Do you ever um, watch like um, instructionals? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I was very into Gary Toner at one point. Yeah, you, because you, of his like really flying kimonos and shit, right? Mm. And very sneak, sleek, sneaky moves. Uh, so yeah. I was like learning those stuff. Yeah. Then John Den, John Den, her system is pretty cool. Like I, I really like the way he breaks down positions. Mm. Maybe the whole leg lock game thing, I, probably that's too much for me. But the whole breaking down positions, how you get out of positions, is yeah. really cool, man. Like because if you think about it, like when you first start jiu-jitsu, right, it's like how do you get this guy off me, right? All of a sudden, now you see all this, when you start learning the basics of it, you start seeing it in a very... Right. There's so many ways to one... to The one ins and outs. Yeah, the ins and outs. Like, I, even I, I thought that I'll just... I'll be using the stuff that I learned from class. Yeah. But eventually, you kind of figure your way out around yeah. different things, right? Because everyone's very different. Yeah. So it's like... I just like the, the whole mental game of this thing, man. It's crazy, dude. It's so fun, man. It's fun. I think the biggest thing that people got to understand, like the flying moves and stuff... Yep. Yeah. It works, it but works. you gotta understand the basics first. Yes. Yep. Like that's one thing. Like I really learned that it doesn't matter how good your flying technique is. Or yep. you miss your flying technique. What do you have to fall back on? Yep. You gotta go back to A, B, C, and D before you try to jump to F. Yep. You know. That's why it's real important for people to go back to the basics first. They should just totally come and train, man. I mean, I lo- I'd love to. I love the gym to. is small, so it's like usually just four to five hours, and we just pretty much training each other every day. Okay. So let's we, I mean, there's a lot of new guys. Yeah. So it's a very very good gym for new guys who like literally knows nothing so it's man i hope like all the gyms open up soon yeah cause man because i mean well next week is supposed to be like the mco being lifted yeah but i don't know i don't, I don't think, think they're gonna yeah, allow gyms to open yeah. you know but it sucks though for a lot of businesses gyms especially i'm just hoping that we can go get a haircut yeah man. Man. i got the you know arnold said uh <laughs> you made this post about how like we all have like the 90s boy band hair yeah oh man i, I just can't, can't wait to get a haircut i just got mine we got it we got it in oh, you can hire barbers now right yeah. i don't think you're allowed to though but you can't. Sure. Like, you can, my yes. brother got it done too. Yeah, get house calls and shit, right? Bro, there's people snitching on people now. Like I know, man, that's it's crazy, dude. Whack, man. Yeah, if you gotta just mind your business. If no one's like putting anyone in danger, just let them do their thing. Exactly, because right? like, everybody's gotta live. Yeah, man, you gotta, gotta eat, live. man. You gotta eat. Everybody's gotta eat. Everybody's gotta live. Don't be a snitch. Right, commentator. How do you end up getting the? What's your injury? Ah, oh, yeah. So crazy. I from the day I got suspended. Yeah. I was like, hey, you know, maybe you can give me some opportunities outside of fighting so I can build that, um, build that, um, that side of things. Because mm. I don't know when this um, medical suspension is going to be lifted. Yep. And they're like, okay, 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 yeah. And then nothing like that, didn't, they didn't um, get back to me. So I keep pushing, I keep pushing, I keep pushing. They're like, oh, um, so the VP of um, production is like, oh, hey, he wants to just, you to send in voice notes of you commentating so we can see like what, what you got. Yeah. So this whole time, like I've been working on that and I'm sending in voice clips to them and I send it in. I was like, oh, we'll give you opportunities. Never happened. Mm. And then it comes to May of last year. So this is, man, I was in, it was hard, man, because I was at a place where I was supposed to be in the tournament yep. with DJ. I was supposed to fight in Japan, which was one of my dreams. 
I was like thinking of ways I could work my way up there, you know? And then all of a sudden this thing drops and it's like, oh, I don't know when you're going to be able to fight again. Like, it was hard, man. Yeah. I had to like try to, you know, as Asians, we don't really like talk about all that stuff, you know? Like we try to like keep it to ourselves. Yeah. Like, cause it, I'm half Chinese. Like yeah. my dad's Nepalese, but he didn't really like ask me like, oh, how are you feeling? You know, what, yeah. what are you doing? You know, like it's just something that we really like keep to ourselves. Yeah, it's our culture, man. It's, it's our like, culture, yeah, it's man. Our it's culture. our culture. So I didn't really yep. talk about it. And I, what I did to kind of remove myself with, with, from it was like I put myself into like this assistant coaching job in Bali helping out the pro- yep. professional fight team like just giving myself to them and then I never really dealt with that issue of um, don't know when I'm going to fight next you know yeah but I think I don't know why I got into this but I think you just got to like keep moving forward man you can't there's some days I definitely felt like you wake up and like damn I got no energy to do anything like, yeah. I don't even want to do anything you know yep. it's just hard but you just got to keep doing the things that will put you forward, like one step at a time. I don't know how I got into this, but yeah. Like, I mean, it's from the commentating. It's real, like, man. Like, even now, like, especially now, like, a lot of people don't, don't have. I would love to be a commentator, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. It's, it's not easy. It's definitely not easy, it's not man. Easy. It's definitely not easy. Yeah. It's definitely not easy. But I got, again, I'm sorry, I went off track again, but I got the opportunity because I was cornering my brother in Jakarta. Yeah. And he was fighting his Japanese guy, Japanese champion. And Michael Chavello, who's the voice, you know, he's the, oh, the big caboose. Yeah. Uh, Good night, Irene. He's like yeah. the guy, man. He's been around forever. He's yeah. like called the biggest fights. Like, I think he called all the K1 shows back in the day, like yeah. all the K1 Grand Prix. He got sick. And then the Bo, the vice, vice president of production, he's like, oh, hey, I heard you wanted um, to commentate. Yeah. This is at the show. Like, I was supposed to corner my brother. Yeah. It's like, oh, we got an opportunity for you with the, to commentate the main show. Do you want to, do you want to? You want to try it? I'm like, hell yeah. Let's do it. Because I, I know, like, these opportunities don't come. And, like, I understand opportunities, you know? Yeah. Like, I always try to, like, prepare myself for these opportunities. Jumped into it. I knew my brothers were going to be okay because he had my dad and he had my yeah. striking coach there. And I, I didn't have a suit or anything. I had shorts and, like, um, <laughs> my vans on. And then they're like, oh, here, uh, let me, uh, maybe we'll go buy you a suit. And then yeah. they come over and Rasul is um, he's in charge, like, the lighting and all, like, the event stuff, the day of the event. He's like, I'll wear my suit. So I put on his suit and my pants are like falling off my <laughs> waist, I swear. Like I, I just p- tucked it up and I sat down and I went throughout the night and the crazy thing is, that was my first time commentating, sorry, commentating on a main show ever, like on, on live TV. And I'm, I'm here trying to like, I didn't, I don't think I did like the best job possible, yeah. but I, I did, I had some moments where like, oh, you know, like maybe like, you can do a really, really good job at it. But that day, I was making my... It was like, it's like a movie, man. This day, I will never forget for the yeah. rest of my life. I get this opportunity, and my brother fights. He's fighting this Japanese guy, and he breaks his leg. My brother throws a kick. And broke the guy's leg. And he breaks his leg. My oh, brother's shit. leg broke while I was like, comment, co- commentating. And I swear it was like a movie, man. Like, here I am. I stopped thinking about everything. It's like, oh, no. Like, I knew what happened right away because I had seen it many times. And I was like, this work. <laughs> for like five minutes I think this dude was like my uh, Mitch Chilson who's like um, the commentator now yeah. with one championship he's like oh I think he was asking me questions and I just kind of hear him I don't hear anything yeah. I don't hear anything and then my brother's like getting stretched out and then I knew he was going to be okay because my dad was with him and Mike was with him and I there's nothing I could do at, the po- at that point you know yeah. like so and then they come up to me, like, hey, I know this must be really hard, but we need you to keep going. We need you to continue yeah. like, to do your job. I'm like, oh, shit, damn. I got... So I really had to like, not think about that. Yeah. But I, every time like, there was a break in like, commentating, I like, sent my dad a message, like, how's he doing? How's he doing? Yeah. You know? Which is crazy, man. Like, he was looking so good up, up until the point. And my brother was going to be back better than ever. Keanu is like, one of the strongest guys mentally that I've ever seen. You know? He's so disciplined. Yep. He's doing all the right things. Like we're training now, he's back. Like you, you can do like, do pads. You can do his strength. Everything's. He's gonna, uh, this is gonna fight again. Mm. Maybe December. Mm. So, yeah, that that day was crazy, man. So be. that was my first intro into commentating, which is crazy. I don't think anything get it can get yeah, any man, worse than that. I mean, what what are the coincidence of it like happening nah, this way, right? It's just mad, I, dude. I never wish that on anybody. Yeah, man. But ever after that opportunity, then they started giving me more opportunities to commentate, and then. There's this. I don't know if you watch one Warrior series. Rich Franklin is the former UFC oh, yeah, champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He runs a show now with a search for talent across yep. like the world now. They got 
all these guys competing for a chance to fight for a hundred thousand mm. dollar US contract to get into one championship. Yep. So I've been commentating that. I've been commentating the Chinese one. It's called one. Uh, well, commentating English, but the show mm. is um again kind of same format where they look for the best Chinese fighters yep. and then the best ones get to fight in one championship for a big contract. Nice. Yeah. So like, do you reckon that um China has a lot of fight like great fighters? I mean, so many, man. I mean, because p- people is a lot there. There's one. Yeah. So I'm assuming so many. So I've been commentating the One Hero series, and mm. the one thing that I see is that they're all so aggressive. Like, yep. you know how like usually when you fight, there's like a feeling out process. You move yeah. around, you like circle a little bit before you act, try to like go yeah. in and fight. <laughs> Bro, Chinese guys don't do that. They like come out and like Chilean throw their head sense. down and bang right away. Like all of them like have this like crazy aggressiveness. I don't know what it is, but Chinese people just don't like to lose, you know? Yeah, I think it's just that they're really competitive, man. Yeah, super Even competitive. Every fucking sport. Every all, sport. Every sport, dude. Why shit, man? So, be, like, what are you... So, let's say now MCO's over. You can fight again. So, what are your plans now? Mm, my plans now... Um, well, I have been the assistant coach in Bali, helping out the professional team there. Mm. I don't know when the border's going to open in Bali. So for now, man, I actually haven't been a, been in KL that much because last year I was traveling so much. I was like helping out the team and I was getting all these opportunities. I was only back in KL like two months out of the 12 months. Yeah. So I didn't really get that much time to spend with family. So this is a good time to spend with family. Um, I don't know, maybe help my brother, you know, because mm. he's back here. Just train with him, get him ready again. And then whenever the border opens up, and we yeah, go back go to back. Bali, yeah. But I like spending time in KL, man. I don't get to spend that much time in KL, so yeah. it's a good time. I mean, it's common to like, travel all the time as well. Yeah, I right? mean, I flew so much last year. Last year, I flew more, more than 50 flights. Like, last year alone, I flew Myanmar, Japan, Romania, Romania. Abu Dhabi. Like, I got to, I flown so many flights last year. Like, yeah. it's crazy, man. Damn, man. Yeah. That's one, one good thing about, like, not competing. Like, I got yeah. these opportunities to go, like, all these other countries. But it's, ah, flying's hard, man. It's tiring, dude. It's super it's tiring. tiring yeah. Super tiring. So, so, are you gonna like when you get back to fighting? So the title is your next shot, then. So you gotta wait for like DJ mm-hmm. and the other guy finish like the the, the challenge. Yeah, I mean, they he's just the champion the, now, right? Yeah, DJ is, is the tournament champion, so yeah. he earned himself a spot at the. Also, oh, the title. tournament champion basically is an opportunity to, to get to fight the champion. Yeah. So you're not a champion of like. No, any, you're the Grand Prix champion. Right. So Prix just champion. for the Grand Prix, you're not, not you're not the division champion yet, then. Not yet. The Grand Prix uh, in itself is a big accomplishment, man. Yeah, like, man. Look at all the guys on there, and then the 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 Super Series, which is the kickboxing side of it, the winner got a million dollars. So you want to be a tournament champion because you're gonna get paid well. And then the, the people in itself, like the people invited to the tournament, are yeah. just super tough. So the. In that tournament format, are they already fighting in one championship or are they like new, like freshly new guys from different promotions? Mm, most of them were already signed to one, but I think the featherweight tournament, they signed the new guys. Man, one is, one is doing a crazy job. They just signed up. I don't know if you follow kickboxing, but they just signed like the best guys in the world, man. The kickboxing side of one championship is just unbelievable, man. Wait, so, so now because one championship, okay, this is where it got me a little bit. Confused because like they used to be just MMA, right? yeah. So now they get into Muay Thai, mm. kickboxing. Then now they have gaming. So are they trying to be like the basically the sports promotional like king of Asia or something like that? They want to be the largest global media property, you right. know. And I think they're doing a great job. If you look at like the reach, like all all the views and stuff, like they got a lot of people, yeah, man. man. No, it's crazy people. that it's free to watch, right? Yeah, I think. I, obviously, I don't work. On yeah, the business yeah. side of the company, but I think they're trying to grow that market and yeah. they're trying to monetize it. And it makes sense. It makes, it makes sense. sense. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Because no one's gonna pay for something that they don't know. You know, yep. they gotta like get the eyes on it first. Yep. And as I'm sure it's got a lot more eyes since it's you know it's available to watch for, for free. You know, for free, you know. For free. For free, man. UFC is not free, dude. Not free. Not free. Fifty five dollars. Yeah, man. God damn. I mean, I don't really pay for it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah, yeah man. You know. Ring it is weak. <laughs> Wait, man. Streams that we don't talk about. So, it's already been an hour, so we gotta wrap this up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. But it's, it's good, man. It's good. It's good to have you here. So Thank maybe you, you can just like sell out. Let people know where they can find you. Where uh, they can check you out. Man, I'm not the biggest in social media. Like I do it just to do it. But you can follow me if you want. My name is Gianni Suba. Like yeah. all my social media handles is Gianni Suba. Yep. If you wanna follow me, follow me. <laughs> I just post what I like, so. 
I mean, it's a really cool guy, really humble guy. You know, I'm, I'm glad we did this. I'm glad we finally did nah, this. Nah, nah, nice to meet you. Dude, if, if this can go on longer, f- I'll, I'll go down fucking long, man. It'll be like three hours. On, uh, uh, the last time I spoke with Aguilin is... Okay, with Aguilin's podcast, it was good. The pro- only problem was, Monaki wasn't... Uh, doesn't smell really nice. It smells like a gym. It, I guess it says, yeah. It smells like sweat and, you know, men and shit. So I went in there, I was like... The, the, the smell came through the door. I was like, holy shit. I was like, god damn. So I walked in there and I sat down. I was like, shit. I would have to talk to him for an hour. In this smell? Smelling this. I was like, I, I can't focus, right, What man. are you talking about? I thought you'd been training jiu-jitsu for seven no, years. No, but you can't even I've never had that scent smell. before in my life, dude. I've what are you talking about? Scent. You've I been in like, the gym. You're... I was like, God damn, dude. I was like, shit. This is like... You're getting soft. Yeah, probably, probably, yeah, getting I, haven't soft. Tra- I haven't been training yet then. I haven't been training yet then. So I was like, going, I was like, oh shit. I was trying to like keep my focus for like one hour. Half the time, I was like, shit. Trying to like not think about the smell. Then I was oh like, my God. what did I ask this guy? I was like, shit. I feel, but it's, it's a good gym though. Monarchy is a good gym. Yeah, great gym. Yeah, man. I mean, honestly, I think the gyms in Malaysia is getting a lot better from before. For sure. Man. They improved a lot. They said They're better hiring coaches. better coaches, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. So yeah, you can follow him on Jenny Suba on everything. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is. You know, check him out on YouTube. You know, check his highlights. If you don't like him, you will. And, you know, thanks for coming again, Jenny Suba. Thank Thanks you, so man. much. So glad to have you here. And, you know, uh, let me know you guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think of, um, you know, who, who you guys want to see next. And I'll try and get them. Anyway, thank you. Peace out. Hey, Pinto. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.